Hi, it's June and we're in lockdown. I thought I'd do a little video and talk through a bit about the history of the Silver Arrow and its uh, relevance to Robin Hood, but uh, especially to uh, Robin of Sherwood. Uh, it goes back to the old ballads and crops up in one story called, of course, The Silver Arrow. You're probably familiar with the story if you've already listened, but basically the Sheriff of Nottingham develops one of his plans to hold an archery competition to lure Robin and his men into a trap using a precious silver arrow as bait. Sometimes it's a golden arrow, sometimes a silver arrow with a golden head. Uh, it changes in the telling of course, um, and of course we know what happens. Um, after it's won, you hear nothing about it afterwards. Um, it's, it's just a short adventure tale, seemingly no message or moral attached to this. The, uh, the arrow itself is just a plot device. It has no function, and uh, other than the value, of course. Um, but of course, in hindsight, silver and its attachment to the moon and lunar energies, and the similar legend of silver bullets uh, connected with werewolves, um, you can see the creative part of your brain does start to wonder if this is simply an arrow or something more, especially if you know your mythology about fairy and elf bolts, sometimes called bellum knights. In older times, uh, arrowheads would often be found on the ground in rural parts and they might be interpreted as being evidence of the fairy folk. Um, in reality, you most likely find in Neolithic barbed and tanged arrowheads, but uh, there you go. Uh, the fairies, I mean, had a much more fearsome reputation than the more sanitized stories of uh, cute winged entities that we might have grew up with. Uh, they'd often torment cattle and uh, human beings, shooting their arrows at passers-by. Uh, if cattle fell ill, sometimes fairies were blamed. Uh, a familiar cure would be to take one of these arrowheads and touch the infected cattle with it, um, then dip the arrow in uh, water and let the animal drink that. So um, make of that what you will, um, you know, but old wives' remedies are very similar for a multitude of different ailments. Elsewhere, there seems to be a tradition of arrows being given away as prizes at archery tournaments, sometimes even up until today. A few years ago, I found reference to a dispute that was happening up in Scotland with, between townsfolk and the local laird who were quarrelling about the possession of a silver arrow of some antiquity which actually had been part of the village for quite some years. The laird wanted shot of it and the, uh, the public were in uproar. Um, and it's this which obviously Richard Carpenter has picked up on when he wrote his version in 1984. Uh, he gives this silver arrow a very firm history and purpose. It's Hearn's arrow. It's the ancient woodland god of the forest where Robin of Sherwood begins. We're faced with uh, Elric of Loxley being shot inside a stone circle and the sheriff taking the silver arrow from his quiver. Eric is explained to be the guardian of this arrow and the sheriff wants the arrow for himself. It's explained further that it's a cult object, a holy relic of pagan England, if you will. Magic, described by Gildas the monk, who had obviously given us the familiar prophecy of the coming of the hooded man. Gildas is a real historical individual, of course, but he didn't actually make any such predictions, unfortunately. And uh, we can see that uh, it has elaborate scrolling, mostly Celtic with Saxon runic uh, script, which is odd, but uh, then perhaps it represents the merging of cultures uh, of the land. Robin of Loxley, for me, represents more of a Celtic individual than a Saxon peasant. Uh, by the way, if you want to know more about what the arrow says, it doesn't, it's, it's random. Robin is told um, of his purpose and sets out to get it back, of course, uh, in the series, but uh, it's not long before the Baron de Belem once again returns uh, due to the arrow's power and seeks to kill Robin with it. It's a fascinating prop which I've been somewhat in awe of all, over all these years. I'm afraid though, because of the similarity with a certain adult toy, it does garner a lot of amusing comments, which is a bit of a shame really. Kip Carpenter himself wasn't actually happy about the design at all. He wanted something more like a normal arrow, but uh, I suppose it's what happened in a, in a 
busy production where the art department just uh, is given a general brief and allowed to get on with it. Nevertheless, it's a very impressive prop, which uh, HTV went to a great detail of care, considering it was only used twice in uh, 26 episodes and would have represented a great deal of time and expense to have made. And of course, there were more than just one. Here is a picture of an amazing replica based on the prop, commissioned by a friend and fellow fan, Jonathan Duval. Some are still available, by the way. They're uh, silver-plated, exquisite-looking arrowheads uh, based on the hero prop, but actually probably more refined design. The original was, had quite a bulbous head, so this actually looks much better proportioned. Uh, very tactile, very heavy, and it catches light on almost every square inch of its surface. A bit of a high price tag, but um, get one now if you want one, or uh, make your own if you have a modicum of carpentry skills, which uh, I sadly don't. I also own a prototype made by the HTV art department at the time. It was obviously a first attempt, a uh, show and tell piece. Uh, it's made of what appears to be pine or birch dowling rods sprayed with an automotive paint. Uh, the runes are actually cut into the arrow, uh, whereas for the ones in the actual series, they used uh, Letraset stencils and a Sharpie, but uh, never mind. Uh, there were five actually made for the production, two hero props made of aluminium alloy. Uh, the other ones were wood, uh, with one that was had a hollowed out tube running through the center where a fishing line was threaded uh, in order to simulate it uh, flying for the second series episode. Uh, again, I've had lots of lots of uh, long conversations about the arrow with uh, Jonathan, and uh, he's been very kind to share a lot of information uh, about the arrow that he's found out with me. When the Legend album was released in that year, Clan had produced uh, some neat little pin badges as a promotional tool. I've had a few over the years and they're really nice little mementos. So um, rare as hen's teeth now though, so if you do manage to find one, well done. Um, next is an arrow tie pin. Uh, this was produced in sterling silver by the producer Esther Charkham for the directors and a few of the production staff at the time to uh, celebrate the end of the shoot. I'm sure again, there cannot be more than a few around. So if you do have the opportunity to buy one, get one. Uh, next is uh, some silver USB arrow sticks. Uh, I mean, how cool is this? I think this is singularly one of the best fan-made items around. Lovely tactile piece and, of course, uh, useful. I uh, wish I'd got more at the time, to be honest. But again, if you, you won't find any about anymore, but if you do, well done. Last of all, um, you've got this great little fan produced item from Mr. Deval again, Silver Arrow Pendants. Again, I, I don't think there are any left now, but uh, things tend to be produced in limited quantities. That's the problem. And uh, if they're any good, uh, they sell like hotcakes. Uh, it just goes, shows you the uh, creativity and output from dedicated Robin fans over the years. Um, some output is fantastic, some not so good. Anyway, I hope this has been some interest for you. Um, I hope uh, to provide more content for you, uh, talking through some highlight props and costumes that I have for the show, uh, maybe some paperwork and artwork in my collection as well. Uh, so I'll see you next time. Uh, follow the new Robin and Sherwood podcast on the uh, YouTube if you can. And of course, uh, come and find us on Facebook. I co-admin the largest, friendliest Ross group on Facebook and the internet, actually. We've got cast members there, we do watch parties, we do uh, publish interviews and exclusive content uh, for free. And uh, you don't have to uh, sit through any sales patter. Opinions are welcome. And um, so come and find us.